Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, and I'm glad you made it here. The message you're about to watch, it is going to bless you, it is insightful, and I believe you will learn a thing or two. So, don't go anywhere. I will see you on the other side. We had an interview, you were interviewing me now, this is a return match. <laughs> Put your hands together. I think my first question, before I even begin to harvest some of the questions, and I know you have a lot of questions, don't you? Your passion for marriage, what do you think fueled it? I think one of the things I find intriguing when you're talking about this is, you could literally see that this is something you're passionate about. Where do you think that's coming from? I, I think, largely, I know what it feels to come from a place where it was not gotten right. And I know what I had to fight through life to get, which the institution should have provided. And in many of those struggles, it was a lonely walk. I could not find books and teachings that would address my situation. I promised God when I come out, Nobody will need to struggle to get the information to come out. That is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. That means books are coming. Put your hands together. My next question. You asked a very tough question and I know that uh, some people might uh, have these thoughts and not know how to ask it. You asked if marriage was like a subscription that you renew, if you had the chance, you know, God gave you the chance to either remarry or not will you want to what about people whose answer is no at this particular time i wouldn't ask you to say who if that's you because you will lie how do we know marriages that are at the breaking point how far is too far we also know that some people experience maybe like a season that um, is an opportunity for them to come out stronger Unfortunately, sometimes it's make or mar. Let me put it this way. A marriage that maybe started well and maybe hit a brick, brick wall somewhere at the middle. What are the steps do you think? How do you, how, what is, what is this? What are the signs that there's light out, light at the other side of the tunnel? And what are the steps towards such a recovery? Please help me celebrate Apostle. That's a very powerful thing. Let me say this. First, the reason why many people don't get help around the area of marriage is for two things. Number one is the ego, that I don't need any external person to help me. Number two is the stigma the society places on that. And unfortunately, people are many, not many people have found themselves in an environment where they can be completely vulnerable. You find yourself in a place where you open up to a man of God about your home and the next Sunday you are the topic. These are issues. But there are indices. First, when people begin to see that we started well, there's a brick wall. Seek for help. All right? Seek for help. And at this point, it matters who is providing the help. Is it in every case that there is light at the end of the tunnel? In all honesty, no. As much as God hates divorce, there are situations where it is better for these two people to go separate ways if they will stay alive. I dealt with a matter where a man will beat his wife and break her bones and do all those things. And one night they had an altercation and they, were all bed, they both went to bed. And when the man slept up as he rolled, the woman saw he had slept on a knife. He placed the knife there. There are people that you should run away from to survive first. Then if you must come together, we need to be sure. That this person has changed another reason another dimension to that is the aspect of infidelity is a very serious one there are cases of people who went out to do many things and brought infections home and ended the, the in fact the, the entire family these are things that we need to approach not from a religious standpoint or from a traditional standpoint but from the standpoint of Number one, up, up to date knowledge of scriptures. I use the word up to date because sometimes people can be loud not knowing what the Bible is really saying. You, and get professional help to be able to ascertain that. 
Please put your hands together. I think that's part. I was just about to ask a question and I saw that someone asked it. And I'm very passionate about this one. I was just going to ask you, you, you told the story of a guy who was having premarital sex and you said you took him tr through some knowledge from the scriptures and then re research. I was going to ask, what did you tell him? I think that there's some people here who need to hear that. And interestingly enough, there's an anonymous message here from someone who says, I am... I have been fornicating with my boyfriend, but he's a good man. Person said, if I have been. So, he <laughs> said, for instance, or when we're growing up, he said, can it be? It's, so, it's not the person. He's asking for a friend. If I, have, <laughs> if I have been fornicating with my boyfriend, but he's a good man, we don't catch you. I just want to say we have caught you. If I have been, imagine, well, anyway, let me just read it. If I've been fornicating with my boyfriend, but he's a good man, and I believe I am a good woman as well, there's no if anymore. Except that this is a sin. How do we move forward as a couple? As yes. a couple. Uh, that's, so this is no longer hypothetical. <laughs> this is first thing first. It is possible that you are people who are even active in God's service and are involved in this. Hmm. It is possible. First thing first. It is possible that somebody listening somewhere online somewhere is in the house of somebody that she's not married to is not married to listening from there maybe feeling trapped or enjoying it it is possible and commenting what one the, the first thing is not everyone at the foundation of their christian walk where there is foundation training where they could be trained in the rudiment of what it means to be a believer and they seem to enter into deep stuff without a deep life mm. And because that is happening, they look at it, that this is happening. And this guy seemed to be a good person. He doesn't shout, doesn't nag, doesn't cheat, doesn't do all those things. It is not about the temperament or the character of this person. It is about the consequence of what is going on. An appetite is being created that marriage cannot tame. What you are enjoying is not sex. What you are enjoying is the type of sex that is a sin against god the repercussion of that is that when the one that is godly comes you will not enjoy it because you have built an appetite on sin not on sex stolen water is sweet that is what is happening when two people who are not married get sexually active they must know they cannot help themselves at that point what it takes to help you is not on you you need accountability you need to be accountable to someone that both of you can trust who will not drag you in condemnation that will now raise psychopath that will go behind to now find better ways to do it and they become addict and that's why i love spiritual environment people can be open you see so they need someone they can be accountable to and can open up to and can indeed there is a need for quarantine you have to go stand the issue is that many people have not learned to be single. Mm. To be single is not to be without a relationship. To be single is to be complete in itself. It's to be in a whole state. Alright? That's what it means to be single. So many people have not learned it. They are addicted to love. Check. The gap between their breakups and the next relationship, the highest is a month. If nobody's calling, nobody's checking, they are, they are feeling uneasy. That's a defect. This fellow needs help to be quarantined. For a while, while that is happening, they are growing. I've seen a case where a guy and a girl were sleeping with each other and they said they need to stop. So they went on dry fasting together. They get, the girl did three days. The guy did seven days. The day he broke the seven day fasting was the day he impregnated her. And guess what? She gave birth to two. To tell you how anointed you need external help. Please put your hands together. If you permit me, I want to also chime in. Let me tell you this. The word of God is enough. But just in case you need some intellectual reason, it's been proven psychologically that you are more likely to marry the wrong person when you are sleeping with the person. And with all the good word you just heard about checking, vetting, and being very open to breaking off with the wrong people, when you're all touchy, 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 you lose to some extent the objectivity that you need to see some patterns and end it because now there is an 
emotional and should I add sexual connection it is also been proven statistically that you are more likely to divorce in marriage when you cohabited before marriage proven statistically and Ava did a research on this yes please many times we think God doesn't know what he's doing on then we, until we go in our own strength and we find out and learn the hard way please just do the right thing for that person tell your friend this one is still related I am a guy I love Jesus when you prefix it that way it's leading somewhere I am a guy I love Jesus but I struggle with same-sex attraction and currently I'm addicted to masturbation and pornography I still hope to get married to a wife one day, a female one day, and I believe that God can do all things. What do I do to overcome these feelings and get married one day? Amen. And I think this is where it gets serious. Because many parents will think their children are fine. Simply because they are same-sex roommates, may not know it may be in a deeper problem. I think the issue of same-sex attraction is a matter of orientation. Listen. There are feelings you've had that died because we did not see anyone to agree with you in that regard. Feelings are strengthened when there are voices to agree. When there are voices coming from them saying, it's normal, it's just biological. I took anatomy as a course on campus and, and I know that some things are biological. Similar things don't attract. Usually, these things are fueled by orientations. So the first thing to do is to cut off everything fueling that flame. You were not created like that. That thing is not even in your biological frame. It is in the mental construct. To look at a man and admire the nose, the pink lips, a man. There's something psychological about that. And the reason why the fellow is feeling is a strong is because there are voices that seem to agree that makes it look normal. For instance, it is going to be difficult in this part of the world we can't stay all over the world in this part of the world to be attracted to a cat at least for now it will be difficult but if you go to places where you've seen somebody has married even the pulpit of a church I, since i've been saying i married this pulpit then you, anything is possible because of the orientation cut off the source what is strengthens will die understand that that you have that doesn't mean god rejects you or god hates you you might even have gone deep in that you can stop the same way you can stop other things cut off the source of the flame make sure you are and that's where accountability is very serious unfortunately you can be accountable to a wrong person but if god has planted you in a house with a shepherd like this a man whose heart is wide and mature that will not come to church and say you will not believe what so and so said you can know that you are safe you can be taught see there's a principle in isaiah 10 verse 27 is that it will come to pass that the yokes have been broken from off your shoulders by the reason of the anointing the root word there is that the yoke will no longer be able to fit in because of fatness there's something growing up spiritually does that the same yoke that used to enter yokes don't increase in size you are the ones that can increase the same thing may not should not be able to fit in if you grow you cannot grow certain feelings you can't just pray it out and refuse to grow and say no no it will catch up with you there keep growing be accountable and then cut know that every orientation fueling it is a lie from the pit of hell guess what it is possible to be attracted to same sex and still speaking tongues the same person can fornicate and still speaking tongues and when that happens, you just feel God approves. No, it's not everything that God, God allows that he approves of. Cut off everything fueling and that is strengthening your belief that it is normal. You will see it will gradually die. Be accountable. Be in a place where you can be taught and mature. And that should end. Please put your hands together. If I can add some thoughts to that, first and foremost, even from the question, you see that Apostle Femme Lazarus was right because if you have same-sex attraction, coupled with pornography there is clearly a reinforcement i don't know if you get do you do you, you see the, the consistency with the question and what he just said i also know that when you look at the bible you see that some people even in their sins had some certain proclivities and you see samson for instance his problem was with women we 
don't see any evidence that he had any problem with money or stealing or something like that. But then you see Judas, his problem was with money. And we don't see any evidence that he had any problem with women, vice versa. And so what happens when you have same-sex attraction, other people don't understand? Well, one thing is common to all men, and that's temptation. And that the fact that you have a legitimate temptation doesn't justify the fact that it must be gratified. It's the same way someone sees stuff that doesn't belong to him. He really wants to steal it, but shouldn't steal it. And so just the fact that you feel something legitimately from your perspective does not mean that it must be gratified. Guess what? The same way you can be born again all your life and still face temptations. It is possible you're born again, you believe in Jesus, and you still have these temptations. And so the, the, the word of the Lord is consistent for all people, no matter the context of your temptations. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And that's the word of God to everybody. Please help me appreciate the apostle one more time. Thank you, sir. I'm thinking, okay, this has been answered. I am a very intelligent and independent woman. Don't judge. What's wrong with you? But I notice that once I get into a relationship, I become attached. I'm all about the person. It seems like I overcare. I think this is a good question. I overcare such that I am only focused on that person. I want them to grow. I want them to do better. I want them to get closer to God. This has ended up ruining my relationships. How do I care for someone I'm dating and love them without losing my individuality? First thing first, this is an incomplete narrative. It's a single story. Usually, nature like this comes with also a toxic side where it is very possible that you are also, and this is not me judging now, concluding too fast about people's commitment. It is not necessarily your care that is doing what you are seeing because people who are not out there sometimes the mistake is that once you someone you can go all out for you overdo it and you may also make decisions too fast now that you are making it you first you need to be able to diagnose this rightly and know what it is what the issue is and um, then outside marriage commitment has limit it has limit you commit with that's sense. deep right there deep right there you can't go all the way there are aspects of commitment you save till it certain this is the person. And in all honesty, in most cases, it is not certain until it is done. Yes. That's what, breakfast can be served on bed <laughs> and anywhere. That is when it is certain. Check, you know, the same way you buy catfish, grilled catfish, they say it comes certain sides, yes. chips and all those things. There are sides that come with that nature. And that is what you need to look at deal with your assumptions and sometimes people have met somebody for just a week and they will call the person meet my fiance you've only known each other for a week and when i show a be matching clothes and when everything finally breaks you say it's my fault because i'm so caring no it is not because you are so caring because you are also not wise and you need to balance it and all should be well there's nothing deep about this thank you as a 16 year old hold on hey this is a safe environment, right? As a 16, oh, hold on. As a 16 year old, 300 level student, if I see a guy whom I like <laughs> and God supports me to marry, can we enter into courtship stage? Amen. Now, let me say something that might be very shocking. I was probably just 18 when I went to meet my church pastor that I like sisters now to marry her. And what helped me was that the pastor never said, What? You? Rather, he looked at me and he said, Oh, wow, bro, Femi. <laughs> he added, bro. And he said, Well, I know you're a very smart young man. I know you love God. And the person, I know, yeah, she's my daughter. I know she also loves God. And uh, God will be with you. That was what he said. Even when he knew that it won't end well. But anyways i did not need his validation i just want to tell him for his information if he had discouraged it would have still done it behind that would have landed us in more trouble this girl is actually not asking the wrong question 
Because after all, the days of our fathers, at 16, you are preparing to get married already. But I will just advise her, give it time. You have time on your side. You can become so much. All right? You might be marrying someone you should mentor because you are doing it too fast. Give it time. Discover yourself to discover the kind of person you need. I want to ask you a question about this. Does this reflect sometimes a dysfunction in our society? What is a 16-year-old doing in 300 level? Because now, when you are surrounded by people who are thinking about marriage, preparing for marriage, that environment pushes you into a premature maturity. What, what, do, what do you think about that? You've mentioned, you've, you've entered something really deep. Most times, particularly when a lady has a circle of friends and all the people they are married, mm. the pressure becomes stronger. My advice is this. You will need at least two people that you have similar experience in your circle so that you will not be under undue pressure. All right? But this girl in 300 level, obviously she's seen people do this and that's where the pressure is coming from. Let me put it like this. You need someone that reminds you of your actual state. Oh, yes. Your actual age. What? A friend of mine was going to get married a few years back and he requested I should be his best man. I said, I will. The people were too convinced that Apostrophe Lazarus will never be your best man. Talk less of going to one thick village where there was no good hotel for the wedding. I went. Somebody confronted me. I said, why did you do that? I said, I need someone that will always remind me of where God took me from. Oh. That person must be in your circle. That girl, you need at least one person. That will not bring you into a place of complacence. But that reminds you of your actual state. So you will not overdrive yourself. Alright? I'm at that a 16-year-old is advancing. But take it easy. You have so much you can become before you start thinking of this. That's my advice. Please appreciate that response. Think about it. I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> I just want to put it out there. I just want to put it out. I couldn't resist. I don't think it's a good idea. Your life is just starting. You have to understand when you get married, what's the plan? Is, is the husband going to understand you are just a baby? No, no, you're just sorry. Excuse that expression. What then happens? You start having children. Do you know how that takes from you, your focus in life, when you should have that drive, discover yourself, discover your purpose. Now you're nursing children, more or less at the, in the prime of your life. I don't think it's a good idea. Anyway, <laughs> what did that pastor say? God will... He said, he said, God will help me. In fact, when everything ended, he just said, ah, wow. <laughs> he was not surprised. Let me say what the pastor said. God will help you. I saw a very good question here. Maybe this can be the last one. Apostle, I think this is a deep one. And I, I really feel this. This lady says, I've been single for almost five years. Weirdly, before then, I always had dozens of prospects. But it seems like I have walked into a hidden season because I haven't met anyone new in years. I've prayed and fasted. What can I do? And um, Can we appreciate this question? I, I really wanted to touch this part in my teaching that the same season will not be open forever. There comes a season where showers become trickles and trickles becomes a season of drought. Sometimes, permit me to be very raw. It is Go because deeper. we did not maximize the season of showers. People think it will be like that forever and it's not always so. Both for males and females. You can enter a phase as a man where all the girls are bouncing you because they feel you are too old for them and vice versa what that means is that a door looks closed is there a biblical way to initiate seasons or to turn back the hands of time first it is possible in fact in the book of joy bible says that i will restore the years that the locusts and the cankerworms this is a very deep subject. When that season change and people enter that season of scarcity, it comes with its own orientation. Where the person becomes desperate without knowing. And what elongates that dry season is the fact that when people are thinking about this person, they are also seeing obvious desperation. Are you with me? Are you sure? Guys, 
don't like what they can't chase. Hell yes. And when a guy feels, why is it like everyone has left this person? And if you look, I'm the one picking this person. They start withdrawing. Even when you see, when you see that a season seems to have closed partially, maintain your sense of dignity. Never get to the point where you are over flaunting it like one who is desperate. What you should do is to maximize that season to prepare yourself for what God is bringing. Listen to this. With God, his best is never in the past. The best of God is never in the past. And what you are about to learn is that God is wiser than men. There is this you are about to be introduced to the dimension of God that is a dimension of all sufficiency where you will see that God has something for you and this is not a way to pacify you. He always does. As someone for you beyond what you could have gone for. But what you have to do is to be rightly positioned and maintain your sense of dignity. You can never be disadvantaged when you cling to God. There's a wisdom part. While you are in the season of showers, understand, it will not rain forever. When the rain is becoming trickles, start checking. And when it looks like everything is dried, maintain your composure. Just know it's not over. I'm not disadvantaged. One year, two years. There are people that are in a situation whereby you can have 14 guys coming around them and they are all wrong. And there's this lady that just one person and that's the right person. Pray. Seek the face of God. Dress well. We should add that. Try not to look your age. Look younger. Hello. No, we don't like this bitter truth. Don't say, uh, when the guy comes around, you say, me to you. I should be your elder sister. Nonsense. Okay? Try present yourself as one who is ready for this season. You discover you can never miss it with God. And make sure you are doing what is right. The best of God is never in the past. He will settle you in his time. Please put your hands together. I'm going to give you one final opportunity to celebrate this great man of God. Celebrate him. Thank you, Apostle. Wow, 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 wow. What an insightful video we just went. I believe, like I said earlier, that you are going to learn a thing or two. So, let me know in the comment section what are the things we learned. Do you have questions? Maybe perhaps I may be able to provide some answers to them. And maybe people can also help you provide some answers to them in the comment section. So, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please do. Because I'm going to be uploading lots of videos for your edification. So, subscribe to this channel.